And this is excess. That's what we're talking about. This is the will of the Gentiles. They speak of the world and the world hears them. Who are you listening to? Who is your favorite on YouTube to follow? Who's your favorite Christian content creator? I'm telling you what they're going to give you beforehand. They're going to give you excess. Welcome back to Approved Unto God. I'm Joshua Govitz. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, we're in 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And some preachers and teachers like to go over what they did. If you want to hear it, you can listen to the last one because I'm long enough as it is. I don't need to kind of reiterate everything. So we're going to pick up in verse three. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. That's a hard word to say, suffice us. To have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you else. Not different, not peculiar. We may have thought we were different, but we were just like everybody else. Just running that rat race, just chasing after money, just cha chasing your own dreams or what they tell you ought to be your dream to go to college, you know, to get a good job, to get that house with the picket fence, you know, to have a few children. And, you know, they have a template set up for everybody and they want you not to make any ripples in the water. They don't want you to rub the cat the wrong way. They want you to go the way of the Gentiles. They program you to believe in yourself, to trust yourself, listen to your heart. You remember the song? Listen to your heart. Da, 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 da. I don't know where I'm going and I don't know why. I know where you're going. If you keep going that way, and I know why, too, because you have not believed upon the name of the only begotten Son of God. But you don't want to listen to your heart because your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But that's not what the world tells you. They tell you to live life to its fullest. They tell you to do what makes you happy. They tell you to basically live for self, that the most important thing is to love yourself. All these different things they say, but the Bible says for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, that self-willed life. And that's what encapsulates the lost person. It's self-will. And that's the will of the Gentiles. <laughs> and if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. If you're not the church of God, you're either Jew or Gentile, according to the Bible. That's the divisions. And it's important that we understand what's written to the Gentiles is not going to be necessarily what's written to the church or what's written to the Jew, though sometimes there's some overlapping. But it's important that we rightly divide the word of truth but we all have a past and a lot of our past ought to stay over there in the past. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind, I press towards the mark. For the time past of our life may suffice us. It ought to be sufficient living that way, living like everybody else, living out of the will of God, living for self, living for pleasure, living for what I can get, not not living for God, not living for others. And what do they do? What do the Gentiles do? They walk in lasciviousness. That's unbridled lust. That's unbridled sin. That's whatever feels good. That's what I do without thinking. That's what comes natural to the lost world. They live 
is a sinful life to its fullest. They don't feel bad when they do wrong. Yeah, they have a conscience. They know the difference between right and wrong. Sometimes they can feel some remorse, but it's just the same kind of remorse that Judas Iscariot had. Usually it's a remorse for, or some sort of sadness because you got caught or because, you know, your sin is affecting your life and it's affecting it for the worse. And, you know, you're just treasuring up and storing up wrath for the day of wrath when you live like that, when you live in your sin, when you don't allow Jesus Christ's blood to cover your sin. He is a propitiation for all sins of every man, past, present, and future, not for the elect only, but he paid the sin debt for every man. And you need to allow him to pay for your sin debt. But as long as you love your sin, as long as you love to just live any way you want to live and you don't want the authority of God over your life, you will stay unconverted. You will stay in this lascivious lifestyle. Lust. Lust. You know, <laughs> it could be for power. It doesn't have to be just for a sexual lust. It could be for recognition. It could be for popularity. It could be a lust for somebody else's things, which is usually called covetousness. But there's all kinds of different lusts out there. But it doesn't matter what it is because the lust of the flesh can never satisfy. You can never sin enough. You can never go after whatever you lust for enough. If you got a million dollars, you're going to want another million dollars. If you looked at a little bit of nakedness or pornography, you're going to want more of it. It's just the flesh is never satisfied. It doesn't matter what you're going after. It's going to leave you empty. It's never going to fulfill what you're looking for. What you're looking for is Jesus Christ, but you don't know it yet. But once you get to know it, it ought to suffice you to have already lived this way. And you ought to start living for him. Excess of wine, excess of wine. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Where in the wine itself is excess. You say, well, only if you get drunk, that's excess. No, the wine itself, wherein is excess. Where's it at? It's in that bottle. And you know, the world even understands and calls different liquors by different names and has the label over them. Or if you go to the liquor store, it may call, they call them spirits, spirits. And some people say, well, if I drink this certain alcohol, if I drink this uh, tequila, I get violent or I uh, start crying or I get emotional if I drink this certain liquor, hard liquor, because they got different spirits in them. But people, they walk after wine, excess of wine, and that excess is the word I want you to see because that's what the lost man does. He lives to excess. It's, it's excessive. Sometimes people can even work an excessive amount of hours. Why? Because they're trying to get fulfillment in something and they think, well, if I could just work more, or if I can just have more money, they don't even spend their money, but just seeing it in the bank account and, and just accumulating more and more money in there, even if they don't spend it, but they, they become excessive about how much they have in there. It's, it's excess, excessive about how much they watch Facebook or scroll through uh, YouTube videos, whatever. And I, I get into that too, because you even see the thumbnails. You know what they are? They're excessive. They're overly vivid. They're uh, popping out right at you. They got all kinds of imagery. And it's funny because a lot of Christian content creators, they're exposing you to a whole lot more of the demonic realm and things that are evil than things that are good. They're, a lot of their thumbnails, even if they're talking about like pornography or something, they have a whole bunch of evil demons all over 
in the background of the thumbnail and why are you exposing? Oh, I, I mean, I don't even know why I'm asking the question. I know why you're exposing us to those images is because it gets you clicks. The more scary, the more evil, the more people are going to be apt to click on it. And, and the Bible says to be simple conserving, concerning evil, simple, but you want to make us wise to that simple concerning evil. Why do you need to remark and talk about what's going on so much with Hollywood? What's going on with worldly singers? Yeah, they're the world. Yeah. Kim Kardashian's probably going to get more butt implants. <laughs> you know, these superstar superstar athletes and stuff. Yeah. They're going to get in trouble and be mouthy with the cops when they get pulled over because they, they're, they're puffed up. But that's not news. What's news for the, for the Christian? It's, it shouldn't be the news of the lost world and what they're doing. You know, oh, I'm going to expose this preacher. I'm going to expose Benny Hinn. As if he even needs exposing. To anybody with any common sense, they'd know that he's a fraud. Joel Osteen, smiling like a possum. Something good's going to happen to you. <laughs> it's all about you. God's got a special plan for you. And you, you, you. And God's your servant. And, you know, <laughs> what do you even need it, uh, to expose him for? Well, I know. If you could be found to be the expert or the one to correct somebody who's very popular, who has a large following, you become the ones that they follow instead of that person. If I can click on your video, you can expose me to uh, witchcraft and voodoo and, and how God saved you out of a life of it, but yet you still talk about it. It's, it's still your number one subject. You say, well, they need to know about it. It needs to be exposed. All they need to know is that the Bible says that witchcraft is wrong or whatever the Bible has uh, in balance when it talks about it. That's what they need. They don't need your images. They don't need to go in to the voodoo room with you as you expose it. And then they cast spells and then you see skulls and you expose the Christian to it. And we're all so naive and so stupid in this Laodicean time that we got teachers and we heap to ourselves teachers having itch and ears. Let me teach you about the occult. I'll teach you about the occult. Stay away from it. I'll teach you about these lusts. And I'm going to put a half naked girl or even blur out her breasts. And you know what that does for somebody like me? Oh, I want to click on that and see maybe if they if they drop the blur, if it didn't stay on her. <laughs> but you expose, oh, you're going to you're going to help us with our porn addiction by putting on the thumbnail Pornhub. And you know what that does for a person that has problem with that? It lights us up. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of this stuff and it's just it's sickening, you know, and well, the red arrow excess, we're talking about excess here. It's not enough that there's one red arrow pointing to something. Sometimes it used to well, it used to be there was something on that screen that they were trying to show on that thumbnail that if you click on it, you could see it up close. Oh, maybe there was something in the rubble that might be the Ark of the Covenant or, or there's Noah's Ark. And uh it's hard to tell it in the background, so you got the red arrow pointing at it. Now the red arrow's pointing at what? Nothing. Sometimes it's just there. And sometimes it's got two, three red arrows pointing. Well, here's one guy, and it's pointing at him, and here's another guy pointing at him. What a bunch of junk, dude. What a bunch of cookie-cutter junk. And this is excess. That's what we're talking about. This is the will of the Gentiles. They speak of the world, and the world hears them. Who are you listening to? Who's your favorite on YouTube to follow? Who's your favorite Christian content creator? 
I'm telling you what they're going to give you beforehand. They're going to give you excess. They're going to show you what you want to see, what you want to hear. And I've heard content creators that are supposed to be Christian that say that they're creating content for your entertainment, mostly. And you know what? It's not even that. It's mostly for the money that we can get. And you know what? We have merch now. We're selling merch. And I like that the Chosen has, uh, they had a new a new uh, trailer that they put up where Jesus Christ came in to the temple to cleanse the temple from all the content creators selling merch. <laughs> he had that whip and he just start whipping them, whipping them. You took my father's house and you made it a den of thieves. You're trying to get rich off of God's people. And some of the, the content creators for Christians, I mean, preachers, missionaries, some of them, I haven't seen them on a mission field in so long, but they're all over on there talking about, oh, you want me to watch another video about TD Jakes for an hour or for an hour, not for an hour, watch them all week. I'll watch them all week and then I'll give you a report on them. What a bunch of crap. What a bunch of crap. What Christianity's become. And you're just lying in their pockets. Why? Because we're still prone to do the will of the Gentiles because this flesh is not saved. This flesh still loves excess. This flesh still is an idolater. It's still lascivious if you don't leave it unchecked. If you leave it unchecked, excuse me. It still wants to walk after its lust. It still battles with you every day. It still can't hardly look away from the images that it ought not to look at. And we're getting more and more images from who? We're talking about Gentiles. We're talking about saved Gentiles. <laughs> Excess of wine. You know, a little wine leads to more wine. I can control it, you say. Well, we'll see. We'll see how long you can. We'll, we'll see when the problems arise and if you control it then. When things are good, maybe you do. You know, sometimes I want a cigar. And I used to smoke cigars actually not too long ago. I think it was 2017. Before I start really getting close to the Lord, and uh, I was kind of backslidden there, and but you know what? Oh, I like me a nice cigar. You know what the problem with it is, though? One, it's a bad testimony. Um, I was gonna go somewhere with it, but it's a bad testimony, and for me, it leads to excess. It got to the point where I was smoking a cigar every day. I just loved the way they taste and I wanted to try all different kinds. And I was smoking a lot of those expensive ones too. And, and I found out about the plume and oh, I'm looking in there and those, uh, what do they call them? The humidors. I'm looking, I'm looking for that white plume on there and you know, it looked like mold, but you know, I talked to an expert on cigars and he said that that's actually the best. That's the pinnacle of a cigar, basically, is the one that got the plume on it. So you start looking for that, and you get excessive about it. You get excessive about all kinds of things, but, you know, whether you smoke cigarettes and you smoke them to excess. And I've heard of people that smoke two, three, four packs a day and all that. And you know what? That's what comes natural. Excess. But God wants us to not be living after excess of wine or lust or revelings let's talk about that what's a revel what's revelings that's basically a loud party that's basically a rave or woodstock for the hippies it's going somewhere where they got loud music and they're lewd and they're drunk and they're passing out and they're sleeping with one another and waking up half naked or naked and then they seek it again, and that's revelings. 
and a Christian going to a concert that's like that, that has corn. And nowadays that's the code word for, for, I would say, but they, corn. <laughs> what am I afraid of saying that? And nobody's watching this anyways. So they go <laughs> to a Christian concert that has corn there and they headline for the corn group. <laughs> the corn group. Oh, man. You know, and they say, oh, if you like corn, you'll like this Christian rock artist. Or, you know, if you like Tupac, you'll like uh, this rapper, this Christian rapper. I'm sorry, but there's not going to be Christian rock and Christian rap in heaven. So you better get your full of it here. Get your fill of it here because that's not going to get no play up there. You know why? Because it's just excess. It's revelings, banquetings, getting together and having a banquet. You know who had a banquet in the book of Daniel? Belshazzar. And he had wine at that banquet too. And it's like, it's something rich people have. They have these big old banquets and big old shindigs and these big old parties and uh, these big old feasts where uh, they eat food to excess. You know that even eating food excessively is sin? That we are to be temperate? All things in moderation? But <laughs> try teaching the Gentile that. No, they just live for banquets. They live for eating and gorging, whether it's eating food or eating all kinds of content on YouTube, banquetings and abominable idolatries, abominable idolatries, sports heroes, worshiping them, worshiping singers, worshiping the rich. Worshiping those that travel, worshiping those that have seemingly a better life than you. You know, you don't even know these people, but yet you worship them because you are built to worship, but you're supposed to worship God. But when you're in the flesh and you're a Gentile, you're going to worship something, but it's not going to be God. You're going to worship yourself. You're going to worship your uh, heroes, your sports heroes, Hollywood heroes. And uh, YouTube heroes. And if you start getting where you're excessively <laughs> chasing after this again and you're saved, then it's time to get right. It's time to repent. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. They think it's strange. <laughs> and you know, when I first got saved, my friends thought it strange that here's crazy Josh, who's not so crazy anymore, but now he's a holy roller and now he thinks he's better than everybody else. You know why? Just because I'm not doing the same excess of riot anymore. And uh, I remember friends who didn't, didn't take too kindly to my conversion. I remember one friend we were going through the drive through over there at McDonald's in Emily City, and I was telling them about my conversion, about how I got right with God. And I didn't even realize I got saved. I wanted you to tell them that. I just said I got right, and I don't want to be around the cussing and the drinking and the partying. And I said, if you want to carry on like that, I'm just not going to hang out with you anymore. And he could see that I, I was serious, you know. And it really convicted him, he said. And he ended up going back to fair state to college and he ended up getting saved and i didn't even preach the gospel to him i was just my life preached the fact that well that's lifestyle evangelism well i do believe in that too and when god impacts you in such a way with the gospel that it impacts the people around you that's lifestyle evangelism but you ought to couple it with the gospel but my friend he <laughs> changed because he saw that I was different. But if I kept running with the same crowd, then he wouldn't see the difference. And you know that sad to say that there was a time where multiple times where I backslid and start running with the same crowd again and got back into these things. You know why? Because 
I wasn't feeding myself the word of God. I wasn't feeding myself with preaching. I wasn't feeding with the sheep in the church. And you get yourself out of church, you get yourself out of Bible, you get yourself out of prayer, and you're going to end up running the excess again in the wrong direction. And then the people of your past will say, oh, I knew it wasn't real. I knew you'd be back. Welcome back, they'd say. And it makes them feel so much better. It soothes their conscience over. It sears it, really, to to think that, oh, I, I knew when he was preaching to me it wasn't real. I knew that I don't need Jesus. I know that that conversion was just a farce. But when you are converted and you stay strong in the Lord, or even if you fall down, you get back up and you dust yourself off and you keep moving forward for God, it's going to speak to their conscience very powerfully. And it's going to make them think that it's strange that you don't run with them to the same excess of riot and they will speak evil of you. Woe to you if everybody loves you, if everybody speaks well of you. They didn't speak well of Jesus, did they? And if you're supposed to be like Christ, then it ought to be similar where people are going to despise you, rejected of men. Let's look at Matthew chapter number five and verse 11. Matthew chapter number five and verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And that's what comes natural to the Christian. That's normal Christianity, but we're living in an abnormal world and an abnormal Christianity where persecution doesn't happen very much, at least not in the United States. It's still happening in some other countries. You still may lose your life for your faith in other countries, but very rare for the Christian in the United States to be ever persecuted. And that's why we're so screwed up. And let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adul adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. But these that live this way, that are lost, unconverted man, they will never inherit the kingdom of God. They have no inheritance. And if we live that way, we won't have an inheritance either. We could be saved, yet so is by fire. We could be saved, but start walking again after the will of the Gentiles and not let God have his will in our life, his will in his way. And what will we have? We'll have the praise of men. We'll have the recognition. We'll have our reward in this life, but we won't have it in the life to come. And what's more important to you? That you get all these pleasures that you used to seek after when you were lost and that you have it now and you have it your way and that you have your reward now and you get the recognition now and you get the money now and you get the girl now and you get the popularity now or can you die to self can you live after the will of god can you yield your members as members of righteousness to god as one who's born of god the spirit of god dwelling in you the spirit of god leading your life the spirit of god leading you leading your hands, leading your eyes to look at what you ought to, leading your feet to go where you ought to go. How, aren't you sick of living the will of the Gentiles? Aren't you sick of stumbling around of sin, in sin? God says, I want you to get the victory. I want you to take this land, conquering lands, conquering areas of our lives that the devil has hold of, and taking that land back when we ought to take that land back we ought to take it back and not give it back once we get it because the time past ought to suffice us. Aren't we worn out yet enough from living our own way? Aren't we worn out enough 
for falling into sin constantly and then just living there. And, you know, the prodigal can always come back. And you don't have to be a slave to sin. You don't have to let the devil win. You could have victory in your life today. You can uh, stand out. You can stand out to this world. You can stand out and even stand out on a street corner if you want and let them look at you and, and think it's a strange thing that you don't run after they, what they run after, that you don't seek what they seek. You know, and they think it's strange, especially if they see you out there and you don't even have a camera. And well, you're not filming this. You're not trying to put this on there on the internet. Oh, you're not trying to get people mad. So that way your street preaching video will get more views. No. You know, and I'm not against filming it. And but you got to be careful because you know why? We still want access, don't we? And I got to be careful on here, too, because. I could be filming this for the wrong reasons. And it's so easy. We're so prone to that because that flesh, it's just what it wants. It wants recognition. And we talked about that last time. It wants to get recognition, whether it's good or bad. But can you just live for God? Can you just be content with however many followers you have? I'm preaching to myself. Can you just be content with how many views you have? Can you be content knowing that I'm pleasing the Lord and I'm studying to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I have to remind myself of that. This is approved unto God, not approved unto men. This is supposed to be for God. This is supposed to be to bless and help others, not for me, but for God and for you. This has been approved unto God. And I hope you join me again next time.